So. Before I begin to talk about anything, uh, so I wanted to like talk about few ideas at the first, and then at the same time like do a hands-on session. Uh, but hands-on session will depend how many people are new to the things which I'm going to talk about. So I mean, how many of you are actually uh, using things right now? Let's just ask one question. Yeah. So at least, okay, less number of people. So that means we'll do the hands-on session. That's nice. And uh, so if you want to. Uh, use or uh, do the hands-on session, please install the Python Finks package. So just uh, search for Python Finks if you are in using Mac or if you are using Ubuntu or Fedora or any Linux, just install it. And so we will go through things. And uh, so I'm going to skip the, uh, so I'm going to reuse one presentation which I did last year in FOSS ACL. Uh, and that's the main line from it. That please remember, everyone reads documentation. So if we look our daily life, we will find the things we use every day, mobile phones, TV, fridge, correct? Few things, like uh, we go to a new place, we try to figure out how to, like, I mean, for me, when I came to Singapore, I tried to figure out how to use this uh, vending, not vending, actually, ticket machines, how to use them. And what is the most common thing in all of them? We read some kind of documentation. It may be manual. I mean, most of the hardware things, it's manual, correct? How to use this new TV, how to use this new phone or this new camera. So that's one point which is very much important that everyone reads documentation, one way or other. Uh, why? Uh, because documentation is the communication. That's the most common way to talk to your users. Uh, who are the users? Say you are a company, then that means you are talking about the people who are using your company's product. You are a developer who is creating a library. That means you are talking to the people who are using your library. You are writing an application developer. That means you are talking to the people who are using your application. Correct? Yes, no, anything? Because I am not getting any feedback and I am not sure if I am talking about really stupid things. So please, any feedback. <laughs> so uh, that's the best of kind of drawing which I can do. So sorry. And this is one example I love to show people, like the difference between good programs and bad programs. And it's, it's a one way of quality measurement, correct? So, I mean, many of you actually saw programs which actually written by someone else long time back. And suddenly one day you went in and you wanted to like work on those projects and looking at the code <laughs> and you have like, you have no clue, correct, what's going on. There's nothing written. You, I mean, you can still find uh, variables like A, B, or X, and Y in many, many big projects, yes. if you find out. So that's, that's difficult. So the biggest thing about documentation is like who should do documentation. And uh, generally for bigger projects, we find there is a documentation team. Like uh, take any free software projects, big ones, you'll find that there is a documentation team who are doing it. But my, the idea is about like who should start doing it. So many times it says the people say that documentation is not a difficult thing, it's an easy fix kind of stuff or low hanging fruits. But if you think slowly, you will find out that the person who wrote that new tool or the person who wrote that new feature is the best person ab who knows about that feature. So if you expect a new person to come over and start writing documentation about that new feature, that may not work so well. So it should be always the developers who should start writing documentation for anything they are working on. They should start writing rather than, they don't have to write everything, but they should start writing the first level of documentation. And the second point that project contributors that goes into the same way, that if you are not a contributor to the project, you are not supposed to know about the project and start writing things. You may be fixing the smaller things, say example, fixing the grammar or spelling mistakes. But if you want to talk about a feature, how great this feature is, 
First, you have to understand the project. You have to be a contributor to the project to talk about it. Examples. Uh, I'm not opening up the sites, but I'm choose, I generally show up these three examples. The first project is the Qt framework, uh, which is being used to build, say, on top of it is KDE and the Qt library, the C++ library and the framework. Uh, second project, Django, we know. Third project, MariaDB. So all of these projects, one thing is very common, all of them are very much successful. They have a big user base and uh, developer friendly. So what's another common point is that all these projects requires, um, they require, along with the code contribution, they require the documentation patch too. So Django will not accept your code patch unless you write the required doc changes. I asked one of those Qt developers long time back, how come the Qt class documents are so nice, each class examples. They have said that if somebody writes a new class, a developer, then it's his or her duty to write the whole class documentation. Whatever it can do, the new examples, everything. And it should go into the patch at the same time. Uh, 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 unless this thing is happening, they are not going to accept the patches. So from these three small examples, you can, uh, if you actually have used already any one of these three things, you know what I'm talking about, the kind of good documentation these projects have. So these things are clear examples where people who are developing the things why they should write the code documentation at the same time. Uh, how many of you actually read any of the team three things documentation? Any of the project? You read Django, correct? Anyone else? Any of the projects? Okay. So Python is again one example. And why? So I'm taking my own example, like that's the right hand side is my general handwriting. That's how I try to write, I mean, I generally write. And the left-hand side is when I try to write a little bit better. So if you get a documentation in both the handwritings, which one you want to choose? The left side or the right side? It's a simple thing, correct? You want the better thing, which you can actually read and understand. The right side, which is my common handwriting, generally the way I write, and sometimes I get difficult, and I find it difficult to read that thing. And you want the same thing happen, not to happen actually, in the way for documentation. Your project documentation should be something which you can clear, proper message, and people can read and understand. Code comments. So many of my friends also talked about it, like what about writing code comments? And while doing so, they sometimes they actually, uh, both the sides happen, sometimes they just write one single line, and they think that everyone can imagine or have an access to a machine which can give them the idea of whatever the developer was thinking or they write a full, uh, full paragraph or a full storybook inside a code comment, whatever things was going on in his mind. And this is too big. But, uh, so I was asking around, so what's going on? like? What kind of code comments you want and what are the things you are looking for? So the first example is the highest used, like I want to track things. So whatever code I change, so if I rewrite a new function, I want to keep the old function as a commented code on the top, then maybe I will not use this code now, but maybe after two months or next release or within next two weeks, I'm going to use this code again. So why not just keep it as a comment? Even I did that many times, sorry. And like finding code is like, oh, next time it will be difficult to find for me to find this part of the code. Let's keep these things. But there is also a question, like, what about to-do entries? So good projects or good code actually keep to-do entries, sometimes within the code, marking them with something like a to-do, capital to-do, or sometimes they keep a separate to-do file, correct, where they actually explain things step by step. But Again, coming to the same point, that to-do file is also a documentation for the developers or the new people who wants to come and see what are the things are still left to be done, where they can come and work on. Going into details about documentation. So what kind of documentations we see? Tutorial. Tutorials are the small documents which can be read uh, or tried on within, say, 30 minutes. 
not too big, not too small. If you are a library developer or you are writing an API, that means you need to have to write your API documentation. People are read that documentation and going to learn about your API, correct? Contributor guide. So you want more developers into your project or say you are a company, you are working proprietary code, but you still want to hire new people in your company who will work on your project after two months or after two years. So you must have a guide which will tell them how to say build up your system, how to do the build system, how to build the whole code, how to test it. So and the last two user documentation we all know and then the how to's which are like bigger versions of tutorials. Uh, say two to three hours it will take a time to go through a complete how to but and you will learn a particular part a particular feature of a project in details by the if you have any questions please interrupt me then and there anything and people who want to try this out over their laptop while I'm talking please install the things project Python things and Praveen and Ivan also will help us while you are working, so if you need any help, you can ask any one of us. Uh, just install using Git. Yeah. So that means uh, you are using it in a virtual environment or system wide? System wide. Okay, then you have access. So, so what are we are going to do here? Basically, two things. One is restructure text. The second part is the Sphinx project itself. How many of you actually know about restructure text or how to write it? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so if you remember a presentation few minutes back, uh, mm -hmm. nice blue color on the top and small, I mean, the title was written below and it was written using, can you, text. So you already saw it a few minutes back. Uh, I'm going to just show you how can you do that in a fast way. So maybe, so, you can actually use this link or note it down. So later on, you want to may want to have a look at it. So this is this was created for an online summer training. So this is a fast track for you, say for restructured text. Uh, so we are going to do that first, so that it will be easier for us to do the things few minutes later. So. Uh, you need the docker tools package and most probably it will be installed in your computer already uh, yeah so just to check uh, please have a look if you have a command called say rst to html just figure out just type rst digit to html this is the command so please have have a look that if you have that command installed on your computer or not who are trying this out? So I will know how to check. So do you, do you have it? Whoever is trying? Yes? Okay. So here, do you have it? The people in the back, do you have it? So install the package called docutils, Python docutils. So please install. It's not that big of a package. So restructured text is the plain text based on, uh, it's a format which is using the plain text to help us write documents. And this presentation is also the similar kind using restructured text. So tell me when you are done, ready with the, this thing. People who are missing uh, the documents. Yeah, but there are few people. So uh, we'll go through this restructured text thing a little bit faster because you can always check and I also don't remember all the stuff all the time. You can always use a search engine to find these things out.
and please inform me when you are done, ready, and because, yeah, ready, uh, are you ready with doc utils, uh, the first row. Excuse me, uh, uh, do you have the restructured text now? Yes, the okay, so. So I'm going to use, I mean, I'm not going to use, like I'm using VI, but you can actually use any editor of your choice. The extension is .rst. So for our example, we'll create a file called test.rst. Use the editor you love. So going into details, so a document can have a document title, correct? So this is one way of writing a title. So I am using the equal to signs, equal to signs on the top and the below. The requirement is it should be at least the same number of characters or minimum, the same number of characters of the main text and top and the bottom line should be the same number of equal to signs. Yes. Uh, ask. How, how can you return? Return the count number that's exactly right the title we have to count number. Oh no, so you have to keep pressing the equal to sign, correct. And if you're using a modern editor like VI, Emacs, anything, they have features to actually add, like plugins to just add it for you or sublime text. So they all come with different plugins. So where you can just type the title and then like so press a key combination. A for me, or uh, there are like, just search there are bananas because these days I'm not actually using any plugins in my VI. <laughs> I'm doing it manually. <laughs> but Sublime, has, uh, Sublime Text has one uh, restructured text snippets or something. That's the Sublime Text one. It doesn't actually care. Huh? You just make it longer words. Yeah, but that's the minimum number I'm talking about. Correct. <laughs> yes. Same number of character, yes. So yeah, the Unicode is always a big issue, correct? Like for most of us in many projects. Yeah. And like time to time I see problems which I have no clue where and why they are coming. So I'm just learning those things like when and where I'm like coming to any particular issue. But yeah, I'll keep that in mind to say to people. Yeah. So, uh, so now we can actually create an HTML out of that restructured text file. So this is the command, rst to HTML. The first the restructured file name and then the output final HTML file. So just click and press enter. You should have the HTML file in your computer and just open it in your browser, favorite browser, or not so favorite one, but. Got it? So I'm going to skip things now, I mean, a little bit faster. So we can have paragraphs of text in our restructured text. A blank, uh, that means empty line will create a new paragraph. So if you want to write uh, 10 lines in a paragraph, just write them continuously without giving any blank line in between. So an empty line will create a new paragraph for you. So just type out something randomly, some characters so that we can find it out. Comments, you can actually have comments within restructured text. Uh, I never use them yet, but you can still have them if you want. Section titles, so generally documents can be divided into sections, subsections. So any of those characters can be used as a section title. And the idea is you put the characters below the title and you can choose any one of them and say for example if we choose the dash as the section title and next time you have to use the dash again you cannot choose any other character for the same level say section title
So this is an example. Here we use the section title as equal to. So next, if you want to create a subsection, we just use another character that is dash. So it becomes a subsection. Yes. So that depends on you, like whatever you want to use. But you have to follow the same thing throughout your document. But I generally never went more than like subsection level, like sub subsection, I never had one. So. So bullet list, that's the easy way. You can again use any of those characters to create a bullet list. Uh, please try it out if you are typing. Use any of those characters for a bullet list. This is the unordered bullet list. Is there a way to tag huh? code? Is there a way to tag code? Because you show the output of the stress test and the code that we should use in the same format. Yes, so as I said that I keep I don't remember things all the time, so even I would love to see how I actually did that. So this is the RST file which I used to create the presentation. Here we go. So the, the two columns with a tab, that's how generally we write any code examples within restructured text. And in Finx also, we are going to use the same. So you can see here, like the RST to HTML, it's with a tab, I mean, in this case, four spaces. And we are using this. Just going back here. Ordered list, you can do two ways. Number one, manually type the order on the numbers, one, two, three, four. Or you can get it automatically following this rule. So you, the documents will take care of number two and number three in the list. So they will, it will add it up. Uh, please try it out if it works. If you have any problem, if you have any problem, just ask so many of us here. We help you out. Uh, Steven, uh, do you think it would be a good idea then to actually add up a few examples with the Unicode text? Do you think it would be a good idea to add examples with the Unicode text and showing them the error if they can get it? Because that's maybe a way to improve them. It might be a good idea. Okay. Um, I think modern versions of documents get it right and treat all characters and not bytes. Okay. Uh, at least I thought previously that right. Okay. But most of us are still not using yeah, so many cases. Okay, I'll do that then. So there are other things, we are not going to try these things out, but things like definition list, example, uh, option list, so things which we use to write down like the command line arguments and how you can pass uh, the, those arguments to your particular executable. Then the literal blocks, which we use, which we are using right now to give show the examples. But as you can see, it's not using any kind of syntax highlighting and things, which we are going to see in the next, the things, when we're going to use things. And we can actually have doc test things. So and in things, we can actually, we can, you can add up your doc test and you can actually run those doc tests from your project documentation while building the documentation. And you can do that. Sorry, yeah, I didn't understand. The last one? Yes. Yeah, so you know about doc tests, correct? You will write Python in the, in the restructured test. So yeah, as a doc test. And we can actually execute that and we can uh, find out if the tests are passing or failing. 
So that means two things. Number one, you have tests. Number two, your documentation tests are always the correct example because if they fail, you will already know it, correct? So you don't have to be worried that your tests are in a different place and you have to copy them to your documentation. You know for sure that your documentation tests are the right ones and they are running, passing right now. So you can have table structures. So there are two different ways. So you can, if you want to have a uh, like simple way or a little bit more complex, which is not getting inside here, but both of them will work. And one more common thing is links, hyperlinks. So that's an example how to create a hyperlink. You may want to try this one because this is they are pretty common in many uh, documentation. Correct. We want to add hyperlinks. You want me to put the Fedora on? You have to give blank lines to mark end of the last section and then you are starting writing something new. And hopefully uh, you, all of you write Python sometimes and that means you know how difficult not having enough white spaces means. Correct? And thanks for adding that up. So we can have targeted links also. That means um, we write down the link details one place and the final destination of the link in the another do part of your document. So I'm just going to skip this because it will be easier. And well, this is again many times we use this. This is the note, dot dot note, double colon, and then the notes. And you can have many things inside the note if you want. Emphasis, text between star, simple to remember. I don't know who are, I know you are typing. I don't know. Are you typing these things? Okay, so you're just typing. The one you saw before, the table, grid tables. Okay, yeah. It's not that friendly, is it? Yeah, so. <laughs> is there a better way? So, a uh, better way I cannot say, but uh, Sublime Text actually had, and even VI, I think one of the plugins had a way like you will just write plain text and then press some. Key combinations, it will do magic and it will give you the whole structure drawn for you. The problem happens when you actually make changes, I mean, you change any text inside that table and then this yes. end and the beginning goes everywhere completely. So. You can have footnotes if you're writing, say, for a book or something or an article. I'm just skipping it. Any questions? So anyway, so this is the end of the basic things which we are looking at. Anything to the RST? So if you have written all these examples, then I can teach you one small thing, which is how to write a pre create a presentation. So you have a file, correct? Test dot HTML, uh, test dot RST, the source code which we are writing right now. So you can use another command which is RST to S5. That is my computer. So you don't have to install it, it comes by default with docutils package. RST to S5. And use this on the RST file or restructured file you just wrote to create a presentation which will look exactly like that one. You, you don't have to note it down, you can just Google for this. So it contains the whole specification. So if you want to know what all things are there in restructured text, you can just go there and find it out. But just use RST to S5 to create the presentation and tell me if it works for you. So what it does is it converts 
slide. Yes, slide. Correct. Yes, so you can actually pass one of the arguments if I remember to, with the style sheet and it will apply the style sheet. And there are other tools also uh, while we are discussing this. There is another tool called Hovercraft. So, Hovercraft and uh, it creates uh, another little bit different kind of presentation. I can give, show you just example. So I'm going to just skip through the presentation, uh, nothing to talk about the presentation, but this is created using the same RST, but with a little bit extra formatting. So instead of sections, here we are using four dashes to create a new, uh, what do you call, it? slide. So, and it can do 3D also, which um, I never used, but it has a little bit better way of things, and you can pass the style sheet and things. You know, so all this little bit fancy stuff. I know, it's just. <laughs> yeah, I know it's easy. But this is the time when I was actually learning this tool and I found, okay, let me try out different things. And this is also a restructured text. So by using this way, if you create presentation, you will spend more time in actually on the content rather than on the look and the feel of the presentation. So I think most of us actually want that part, correct? Focus on the content rather than the way it looks. Thank you. So this is that Python Hovercraft project. This is the presentation, hovercraft.rtft.org or Rita Docs. So have a look later on. Uh, you don't have to do it now, but just note it down. So can we move to the things? If, if, if you have any questions on the restructured text, any questions on this? I mean, not hovercraft, but RST is the text too. We can move into things. So I just created a directory 2015. I'm going to use this as my documentation project. So the general idea is uh, when you write, create a project, it can be a project, by the way, uh, things can be used for many things. It can help you to create your man pages. It can help you to create your book. PDF or it can it, it generates PDF using uh, LaTeX most of, the, most of the time. So the PDF output looks really nice. We'll have a look at it. It can help you to write books. So I know people who wrote uh, music related books using things. I have a very small book on Python programming, which is basically about teaching Python to people. I'm going to go to that example first. And I mean, this is things what you are looking at here right now. So this is how the things output finally looks like. So he wrote the documentation using things. Uh, this is a website called readthedocs.org or rtfd.org. So this project automatically generates your project documentation when uh, you make it available somewhere using some kind of version control system. So I'm going to, and you can have different kind of themes. So I'm opening my book, which is uh, pymbook.rtfd.org or readthedogs.org. It's called Python for You and Me. Uh, good thing is, like, there are things like I can. I am actually having two different versions. So the latest is the Python 2 version of the book, and there is a Python 3, which is basically a Git branch, Py3. So there is a Python 3 version of the whole book, and you can download the PDF or HTML things from it. Okay, coming back to the things. So, how to start writing documentation using things, so which was supposed to be the main part of the whole workshop, but I think we have 12 minutes. 
for it. So what's the benefit with by using this one but just write in XML cell? Uh, no. So so it, see, if you write HTML, then you have to maintain the HTML, correct? Correct. So you're made, so there are a few points. So you, you should feel free to actually use that kind of workflow also. But that means you're using more than one tool. And here, what the benefits, what I can see all the time is we are using a standard documentation uh, format, which is restructured text. The same tool can give me my man pages. The same tool can give me my good, really good looking documentation in HTML, single file, multiple files. The same tool can give me my PDF. And there are already so many projects which are using things. And the biggest example should be the python.org itself in the documentation section. So if you read Python project documentation or if you have the PDFs in your computer which you downloaded maybe before and you want to read about it, so all of those are generated using things itself. And because they use a different theme, so the documentation look a little bit different. So that also means you can apply your own theme, you can create your own theme. And we have projects like read the docs, like here, which takes care of all your, um, yeah, so read the docs.org. This project will take care of all your building of your documentation, publishing it. So you can actually configure your GitHub or Bitbucket so that every time you make a change and push it to your GitHub or Bitbucket, the project documentation will automatically get rebuilt every time for every change. So your, that means your documentation is always updated, the latest thing. And if you want, you can keep maintaining the older versions also as a documentation. So, and you don't have to take any headache, correct? It's running there all the time. So what you're saying is that you're, we're going to show now is that the documentation itself is in the code, right? That you generate it from the code. Uh, not, yeah, we can do that also. We can, we'll, so we'll see a little bit small example of that also. But uh, most of the document we'll write separately so that it becomes easier for people to understand. And I don't know how many of you uh, read Pay Paid? Anyone? No? Okay. So, <laughs> how many of you uh, know about doc strings? In uh, how many of you are a Python programmer? First, you write Python regularly. How many? Uh, I mean, okay, once in three months. So, how many of you actually write, uh, know what is a doc string? Okay, doc string? So, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll just go through that example, like how you can actually write a little bit better talk string, which can give you a way to actually automatically generate the thing the way you want. Is this raining? Yes. Oh, wow, nice. Maybe not that nice, but yeah. So the idea is that your documentation generally stays in a directory called docs, D-O-C-S, all small. So I'll create a directory inside my project. I'm going inside the docs directory. So this is a standardized name which each and every project in generally using. And the read the docs also takes that as a default path to find your documentation. And so there is a command called things hyphen quick start. Please do not press enter, listen first. There is a command called things hyphen quick start which is basically a uh, few steps. It will ask you a few questions, and based on the answers, it will create the make file and the configuration file. May not make, make file, the configuration file, basically. So you will use that configuration file to generate your documentation. So I'm going to go through it, and you may want to follow along with me. So root path for the documentation. So this is the docs directory. This is where I'm going to do it. So the current directory. Separate source and build directories. I'm going for the default option, no. Name prefix, I'm going with the default option, underscore. Project name, this is something I should pass. Now what should be the project name, for CCA? Author's name, I'm putting in my name.
project version 0.1 release it's the same source file suffix so actually you can have either .rst or .txt both of them as the source file for documentation I'm going to use the default .rst so that I'll be sure that this is a restructured text from the extension master document is the index that means index.rst so there, now these are the few features which you can use so if you want you can actually rebuild or build epubs out of your for your documentation say you are writing a book instead of just normal documentation so you may want to write uh, create epubs i'm going to do no actually i'm going for no for most of the things the thing you asked for automatically getting documentation and doc strings from code i'm doing it no for now we can see it later on doc test do you want to run the doc test the thing i was talking about that you can run the whole test framework uh, test thing from your code uh, documentation so these are basically few python classes you have to write uh, inside a python list in a configuration file write to do entries i'm also saying no coverage so you can actually add coverage so if you have some kind of mathematical equations there are two ways of generating it one is png yeah coverage means that to warn us if we didn't document something like yeah so it goes into the parts of the source code to check if we that's yes that should be the i think that should be the way or it uh, maybe just import the code and see if the doc strings are there or not i mean i don't know how it implements it so it probably looks at like how many functions you have with our doc strings that you should probably do something like that. So that makes sense without the log. Yeah. So, so there are two ways, PNG math and math Ajax. If you have mathematical equations, which I don't have any of my documentation, so always know. If config, I'm just going for no, I never used it yet. View code. So sometimes you want to give links to like view the code when you are say documenting your like, API documentation or documenting some class somewhere. So now create make file. Yes, we want a make file. Windows command file that is a bad, dot bat file. I generally put it no because I'm not using Windows. Done. So after this, if you just do the files, you will see these are the files and directories got created. So we have a underscore build. This is the place where the final build will happen. We have a con.py, which is basically all this input which I we just provided. Index.rst is the default index file for your whole documentation. Make file and there are static, underscore static for any static. Say in your theme you have some kind of images or you want to add some images in your documentation, screenshots or photographs and templates so templates is the place where you're going to use for themes like you want to add particular templates i'm going to open up few files here first we're going to see the com.py so you'll find out it's a python code which all the thing we put the input we provided the input these things became the parts here so if you want to change your project's name you just have to change here So if you remember, we never added any of the extensions, correct? Or we said, I said no to everyone. So those extensions are basically here, will come here. And there are other details. So if you are generating some, say, let's say LaTeX based uh, PDFs or LaTeX output, so you can add up extra uh, direct input to the LaTeX system here. So like for man pages, say your project, like which section of the man pages you should go for. So you can add all those details here. And these things are pretty heavily documented into the things website, things uh, docs.org, I guess. You just have to Google once. If I open up the index.rst, which are almost out of time, but anyway. So this is the index.rst. This is the default thing they will give you, the things project. So you can understand that's the top title there. Welcome to FOSS the project's name, uh, comma, I mean, documentation, and then there is something special here, correct? Dot, dot, spare, TOC tree, that is table of content tree. So, because the documentation for a bigger project will not be only one file, it will be spread across various files. 
So we can actually have a table of content directly added here. So I'll just write first here and then we'll go through. <coughs> Remember this thing, this is three spaces. By default, things creates with three spaces. So if you press a tab or create four spaces, it will give you an error. And it's generally very difficult to find out why it is causing the error. For us, at least, we figured out like during workshops, we become a little bit confused why. So I'm giving just these three spaces. So let's say I want, in my documentation, the first thing I want other than the index, maybe uh, install guide. Correct, we need an install guide, how to install your software. So I'll write the file name without the extension, install. That means what should be my documentation file name? install.rst. Is it okay? So this name is the file name without the extension in the table of contents. Is it okay? So now I'm just going to get out and create a install.rst. How to install FOSS is here. So if I want to have a paragraph like I'm just writing some random documentation so you feel free to add whatever you want to write. Maybe So this is my install.rst, that is my install guide, this is how you install FOSS here. Uh, I'm going to close this and generate the documentation now. So there are various uh, builders which are basically the what all things you can do with Sphinx. I'm just typing make, so it will give you an options what all things you can do. If, if you see it's a pretty long list, the things which are available for you. We are going to create only the HTML out of this just to see. So I'm going to do make HTML done. So it was docs and Okay, this is the thing, make HTML, we got this. So the output is underscore build and inside there is a HTML directory. I'm going to view the index.html and we got this. So this is the chapter we wrote, correct? Install chapter, so you can see the section came here as a section and the subsection is below in the table of content. And you can actually configure the depth, how, how down you want into the section, subsection, sub subsection, all those things. So I can actually click it. I'm here, I can see, and this is the default theme of things. So you can feel, feel free to choose whichever things you, uh, theme you want. And because this is a static HTML, you just have to publish it over some directory in running some web server, any web server. And there are a few things you will get by default with this, things like module index, you can get an index, and you can actually search also, say, Here you go. So you don't need any particular search engine running on the server to help you out with these things. This comes as a default feature. And you can remove it also if you don't want any search box in the left or top. Yeah. You have a question? So just try out, build your own documentation, that thing you wrote. If you have any error, please ask. Like. Uh, 
What's going on? No, I, I guess we were thinking how it did search and it searched yeah, so JavaScript. So if I open again the say install.rst Say I want to create a link. Can anyone tell me how I, we did it? How we did it? Anyone remembers how to create a link? And then I'm going to do make again. So now we have a link to the primary website here. The best way to learn about things is not actually only about the reading the things documentation because it's in depth. The easiest option is actually if you want any particular feature which you saw in any other documentation, just read the open the RST file and see how they did it and just copy paste. It will work all the time. So generally what I tell people like So this is that book which I talked about, Python for you and me, uh, which I showed a few minutes back. So it contains a docs directory. Uh, forget about the rest of the directories, those are from the old days. So you can just go to the docs directory and you'll find the whole book as .rst files, as a things documentation there. So you, if you want any particular things which are there in my book and if you want to have the same thing in your documentation, just open up the corresponding file and see how I did it. And there is obviously the things, the, the site itself contains all the other things as required. So, there is another uh, nice project which is not coming from the doc utils. That means you have to install it outside. It's called RST to PDF. It's from another uh, Python developer, Ral Sina. He is from uh, Argentina which is a very nice project if you want to create any quick PDF files from your document. So it's just like RST to PDF, RST file hyphen O, the output PDF file. But uh, any questions? So I don't think I will continue too much like, because it's already coming down, but we can talk for five minutes if you have any questions. Yes? I'd like to mention another feature that I found to use oh, okay. Okay, I never knew about it because yeah, it's, it's nice. okay. What is it called? Graphics. Graphics. Yeah. There's a so graphics so those things. Okay, nice. Actually, other than doc tests and auto imp auto import, I mean, from the code things, I don't think I used any other extensions till now. Yeah, well, if you want to document mail, you have to document mail flows and mail flows are best documented in the future. See, this is what I was talking about, that you figure out how the other person did it, open their file, see the example, copy paste. As I said, so the best way to learn is, um, I don't know where I have the example. So the best way is, so in things you can actually interconnect different projects. So you want to go to the module where you have the module example, correct? Or say for example, 
you are writing something a Python API and you want to link to the Python projects, say collections module or collections uh, counter class. So there is a shortcut ways which are available inside fields that you can just write it like collections and uh, what do you call it? the class counter and it will automatically create link to the latest version of that thing. So we can have actually look at it a little bit of it maybe. <coughs> I'm opening the documentations which I wrote before so that it's easier for me to actually remember doing the things. Uh, I hope this contains some examples. Yeah, so like the submodules, the section which I am like documenting my API of the submodules. So if I go to the docs, actually, ah. Ah, but this is a bad example, maybe. I'm just using a table of contents, but, yeah, but uh, I don't remember the exact syntax, so just Google for it, you'll find all the details there. And I was actually trying to show something else. Just, I forgot what I was using. So, uh, the restructured text has something called uh, directives, so which is starting with dot dot, and like dot dot note. Yeah. The dot tree was. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, the directives have specific programmatic constructs like dot dot function, dot dot method, and then you can follow up with either your own, so if you manually document your code, you have to write function name and parameters, but if you do a function name in back quotes, just like you do a link, if when you create your configuration file, you say where your source code lives, you don't actually find your file, your, your function and the dot yes. And you can pull it in, yes. It's just a configuration and you have to write functions back code. That means you want to link to this code. And uh, another option is actually say, do I want to have like ex expansion click to show source? It will embed the source code of the function. So, so, this, that's, that's so this is the thing which he is talking about. So I mean, this is the part you should do in the code section. You are asking me, correct? So here, using the documentation, I mean, doc tree, I actually wrote that thing that colon class colon and within backticks retas dot connection error. So when this documentation will be automatically generated, it will know where that class is there. So if you click on that URL, it will actually take you to that connection error object. But that's more, so it, it gets the doc string and if it has a directive there, it also yeah, so so you, 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 can, you can use this in your, okay. you can use this directly in RST files, but you can also use them in your doc strings. So your doc strings can be uh, your complete restructured uh, text things. So whatever you write there, you can actually write it down here. And in Python documentation, which is uh, uh, the thing is that you have to write both places. So say you are adding up a new function. So you have to write the same documentation, quality documentation as your doc string. And then you have to write the same thing into docs.python, that is the documentation directory also. So we maintain both places. But what I thought about strings was that you could do just put the whole, write everything in the doc strings and run strings on the code and get the documentation out of that, right? You can do it like up to a level. Say you can add up doc strings in the I mean, module level strings and you can add many things from there. But at the same time, you do not want your code to be like 2000 lines all the time, correct? When you have a, say extensive documentation. So you want up to some level because the good thing about uh, doc strings like this is that if somebody is actually do not have access to your documentation. They are actually imported the module, say, in the Python interpreter, and they want to do help on the, say, class or function. They will still get this plain text, restructured text, uh, and they can understand what all things are there. So you will see another example here. I used the colon, return colon. So that way, I can actually mark inside a function, uh, like, what is the return type. So, and then there is a note and there is a doc test trick part. So, 
if I see this example, this is the Q, correct? So if I go to the Q, this is the thing. So you can see that that colon return colon automatically became returns, correct? Exactly what this function is returning. And then there is a note section and then there is a doc test. So and true was evaluated when you generated, is that it? Yes. Uh, yes. So you can see from the documentation if the test fits. Yes. Or you can use it as, at the same time, you can use it as an example code also, correct? That's an example code. Yes. And it's a test. And it's a valid test. Yeah, so your question, when you, when you run your build on, of your docs, your doc test will run. And then you will see your demo. So you won't see a, 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 an output in each channel that this doc <coughs> failed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so you don't want to publish, okay. or maybe you want to fix it before. <laughs> But we always do that, correct? Pushing something, <laughs> you fail everything. Yeah, because we don't write tests. <laughs> but that's a different problem altogether. We are not going into details for that, fighting that. But, but, but the idea is like, if you have good documentation, you will always find that, I mean, people will come to your project. If they can't find good documentation, good help, they will spend maybe a few hours, maybe a few minutes, and they'll move to the next project, or next company, or next product. Because that's where you do the first level of communication with your users. And I'm showing things because I personally found that's a very nice and simple way for me to create better looking good documentation. And so many other projects are doing it. Let's say, but there are obviously other tools also available for documentation. It's not like you only have to use things. Like I used to do, um, say you are doing blogging, correct? Uh, you can actually do blogs using restructured text also. There are many available options. But the best option is from the same guy, Ralsina, who wrote the RST2 PDF. It's called Nicola. The website is getnicola.com. I, this is, I think, with the highest amount of features and super fancy restructured text features. It can do YouTube videos, galleries, and very because they added lots of extra uh, directives. Yeah, so I'm a Pelican fan, so okay, so <laughs> we will not fight over this. No, there, I mean there are so many options. Correct. Yeah. I was and you know, fun part was like I was using Nicola a lot, and in between uh, because of the upgrades and I did something stupid. I had trouble to actually rebuild the things when the a uh, little bit syntax uh, configuration file actually was changed. So after that, I moved to Mountain based blogs because I figured out in my blog, I actually am not doing so much fancy stuff. So I just need plain blog. And I wrote a new tool completely. So I, my blog is running my own tool. <laughs> but Maybe you can mess up one. So the nice thing about Sphinx is that it's already an old project with so many plugins that you can do stuff. But there's a new project for, for simpler documentation for another upcoming documentation tool called MKDocs. It's by the same guy who did uh, 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 Django RESTful. So the full Django RESTful documentation is written in MKDocs. Okay. And uh, actually, uh, a lot of, so it already has a built-in uh, 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 read the docs uh, uh, theme, which is not used here. But it's, uh, the, the big difference is that this one is using plain markdown. There's no, you don't, if you know markdown, you don't need to learn Sphinx. But the disadvantage yet is that you don't so easily integrate with existing code base or, or but writing documentation or starting writing documentation, this is a, like a, a zero barrier for starting. So Sphinx barrier is you need to learn uh, uh, structured text. Yes. But this is a very, very easy way to start writing documentation. It's incredibly simple. So there are many options available. So you have to choose which one works best for you. We are not going to tell you that thing. But like, please use these things and write to documentation for whatever project, whatever things you are working on. It really helps people. So many times I know, like, and all of you get frustrated over the developer whose module you may want to write, but you can't find a single example, working example, which will work. Correct. Or even about how to get the source code properly. So please work on those things. Like if you have any problem, there are so many. Like if you go to the uh, IRC channels, uh, like you, you can even ask on HasPython. There will be enough people who can actually point you out how to solve your issues. 
with the documentation. By the way, is there any student here? Like any students? Anyone? No? Okay, one, two, okay, nice. So just as a separate note, the GSOC is like Google Summer of Code is there and the PSF is also taking part doing a participation with all so many sub projects. So if you want to apply any of the projects, this might be a good time. If you want to work on upstream Python projects. But not right Sorry, yeah, do, do open the proposals opens up tomorrow. Student proposals. So, thank you for coming down. And uh, my uh, website is kushaldas.in, I think. And my uh, our Twitter handle is at kushaldas. So, feel free to tweet to me, or you'll find my email ID kushaldas at gmail.com. Ask me anything if you have any problem ever. So.